there was this manager at Morrison's. She was kind of new. She came in after I worked there for about two years or so. The first thing, the first interaction I'd ever had with her, and I didn't know who she was or where she came from. She told me to do a lot of work. She says, "Can you move this thing and that thing? And put all this stuff in this big cage in the warehouse." And this was like the warehouse was like our sacred, sacred place. Like you and the managers and the, you know, all worked on a plan and stuff. And she. And this woman was just walking through there and she just like approached me, she never had a name tag or anything on and she just like did that and that and I'm like okay I done it, I was cordial, I was really nice um, I didn't really ask who she was because it's kind of rude that I was young I was maybe 19 I was like I don't want to go and say so who, who are you sorry like what's your authority to do this she just acted like a manager so I just treated her like she was my manager and yeah sure enough she was the GM the new one um, so she used to share lots of like stuff of personal stuff about her family I guess she used to talk about her son a lot she used to say how he's like a, a mummy's boy and things like that he loves his mummy I was at school I used to like just listen to her um, she could be kind of a bitch but I'd, I'd I tried to like be really nice to her and just like listen to her and stuff like that and that's kind of like she took a liking to me some days she had like a way of sweet talking it was kind of like weird for like an old, older lady because like she, she would use like facial expressions and stuff um, it's kind of weird she was kind of like a flirty mannerism but It was just strange, right? So, th uh, this story is like about a thought I had about how she referenced their son being a mummy's boy, right? So the second part of this story is I used to get picked up by my own mum from my work. So she'd come and pick me up. She'd wait outside sometimes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, till after the shift. But she'd always be asked to stay at over your time and finish some work or whatever. Um, sometimes this would go for half an hour and I was well aware that my mum would arrive early and she would sit and wait and she'd be in the car. And so eventually I would kind of like try and get out. You know you work fast so you try and set up your day so that you're not kept up. But the, the, the ones that sucked and this was usually the case like they would tack on extra work at the end. So they just get used to you being there afterwards and they're leaving half an hour after me, check out staff and the like managers I guess need to walk up. If my warehouse is done and the truck's been and I've filled it all off and put everything where it needs to go then my job's done, you know. But my job should be done when the clock runs out, you know. Um you get told to clock out on your clock out time and then you get told to stay back and finish up, right? That's how it was at Carmen and Morrison's. And so one day the lockers are upstairs so you get all your shit from upstairs and I'm, I'm up there getting my stuff out and the corridors are really narrow up there and the GM's up there and she says, oh, you're leaving, you're leaving early. In fact, probably five minutes past, right? And I go, yeah, my mum's outside. I don't want to keep her waiting all this time. And she goes, you're not a mummy's boy, are you? Ugh. And she gives me this look like that. And so this is where it relates to the first part. And I'm like, you called your son a mummy's boy and you said it in an endearing way, kind of. And this is like hypocritical. It's like two-faced, isn't it? She's like, oh, you're not one of them. But her own son is. So, like, if she applied the same sort of disgust she had for me to her own situation, it's just, it doesn't, you know? Um, so, like, I realized that in the moment, and I kind of, in my head, I was a bit stunned. I was like, what the fuck? So, I remember going out and sort of explaining this to him in the car, but that was the. Now, that moment sticks out in my mind a lot because that was the one time where I went, you know what, I'm not doing another thing past my clock outside. 
way. I don't care how you treat me. I used to want everyone to treat me nice. I was a people pleaser. So, once I let go of that, and I stuck to the rule, that was better for it. But in the long run, those, those type of shitty people, once you're not doing what they ask, once you're not going the extra mile just because, and then they, they, they insult you and stuff like that when, when they're, you're not doing that, uh, they great on you. So you don't want to stick around. You want to just fuck them. That was my first job. Um, and I <laughs> also experienced what having loyalty was like for a company. And uh, having been betrayed by that type of thing as well. Like your loyalty is not really worth anything. You know, 